Hi everyone. Okay, so let's talk about the empirical rule. Basically, the empirical rule is able to provide estimates of the spread of the data for the normal distribution as well as uh, the area under the curve. Some of the properties of the normal distribution you should be familiar with, but you need two things to describe the normal distribution in any system. First, you'll need the population mean, right, which is in the center, and then also the spread, the standard deviation, or the population standard deviation. From now on, I might say mean and standard deviation, which I'm really trying to say population mean, population standard deviation. Okay, so from here on, for a little while, the empirical rule, the way I'm going to describe it, is really not textbook. Um, it's a little bit away from the textbook, and then we'll come back to what the textbook tells you. So, one thing I like to do with this empirical um, rule is to draw the normal, and you'll see that I don't write three sigma and negative three sigma, and the book does, but I don't, okay? This is more than enough. I split up the normal into six pieces. And as you can see, from negative one standard deviation to one standard deviation, I can shade 68% of the normal distribution. So if you have a normal distribution and you know where negative one standard deviation and you know where positive one standard deviation is, then you'll know that that area under the curve is 68%. If you know where negative two standard deviation is, and you know where positive two standard deviations is located, right, from here to here, then you know that if you shade between those two areas, you get 95%. And then on the corners, that's 2.5%, and then the other corner is 2.5. Remember, this um, the uh, normal distribution, right, um, never touches the x-axis, this just keeps going forever and ever, and this side as well, right? It gets thinner and thinner. Okay, so you can, these pieces here, right, we can figure out um, the size or the area under the curve. Okay, so this, again, is not really empirical rule, but it's implied. So from... Uh, the mean to one standard deviation, right, we have 34%. And then from negative one standard deviation to the mean, we have another 34%. How did I get that? Well, I know that all this is 68%, and then half of it is 34. That kind of makes sense. And then from negative two standard deviations to negative one standard deviations, that's 13.5%. And then from one standard deviation to two standard deviations, that's another 13.5%. How come? Well, if this is 68, right? From here to here, that's 68. And then from here, from negative two to two, that's 95. If I subtract 68 from 95, I'm left over with a number. That number, if you... Uh, divide by 2, that gives you 13.5. Do you know what that number is? Yeah, 27. Okay. And then, of course, the rest, 2.5 here and here. So when you add up all these values, all these pieces, or these six pieces, you get 100%, which is part of the properties of the standard deviation. Okay. Now, if you look at a book, it will say something like this, empirical rule, you know, you have areas under the curve, 68% is, uh, is, has a region of negative one to one, the spread from negative one to one, uh, or 95% um, of the normal distribution goes from negative two to two, which we just talked about here. But they usually have 99.7%, which is goes from negative three to three, 
the spread goes from negative three to three. And then 100% of the curve to shade it goes from negative infinity to infinity. So sometimes you'll see the empirical rule, right, as what they call the three sigma rule or the 68-95-99.7 rule. And that's what you probably will find in the book. So, okay, we're done there. But why do we use the empirical rule for? Well, we use it for a couple of things. But one thing is one of those word problems that talk about, you know, um, the area under the curve. For example, sometimes they'll see, hey, what's the probability that X is greater than four or something like that? And, you know, you look up a table or you use your calculator and it gives you the answer um, based on the normal distribution that they give you. Well, it turns out that you need to change this to a Z-score, which uh, you'll somebody will explain that to you. That Z-score has a formula, Z equals X minus mu over sigma. Yes, that same mu and sigma as this mu and sigma. And then X is the value that they're talking about. You plug in those three values that give you Z. And when you have Z, the value of Z, you can put it here. And then with that value, that value goes here. And then you're able to determine the shade. Now, that's not an explanation on how to do Z-scores or anything like that. Um, but it gives you a sense of what direction you're going to go with when you use the empirical rule, because you can estimate the answer. And when you put it into a calculator or look it up on the table, you'll have a better sense of what's going on.